Underneath the morning sun, students are rushing towards their school. They are also chatting with each other along the way. Meanwhile, a brownish-haired boy is trying to catch up with a girl, as he is telling her to wait for him. However, the girl is running away from him and she tells him to stay away from her, since he is annoying her. The boy becomes embarrassed as he states to her that she doesn't have to be so blunt like that. Funnily, the girl scolds him that, if he wasn't so annoying then she wouldn't be like that. Looks like, dude is getting grilled. The boy is still following her like a lost puppy, and it seems like the dude can't believe he can be that annoying to her. Whereas, the girl looks angry because of his behavior. Thus, she tells him to stop being annoying. Funnily, the boy informs her that he can't do that, since he can't let her live in peace. Seemingly, the girl looks done with him as she walks away. On the other hand, the group of boys are playing a football match on the ground, when suddenly, a powerful kick sends the ball hurtling towards the direction of the brown-haired boy and the girl. Their eyes widen in surprise as they watch the ball speeding towards them in a very dramatic motion. Their hearts raced with anticipation. At that moment, the time pauses and the boy goes into his fantasy world, where he gives us his life introduction. It appears the brownish-haired boy's name is Wataru Sajo. He is an ordinary male high school student, and if he had a characteristic, then it may be that he is perceived as the sort of stalker guy on campus. Whereas the girl's name is Eika Natsukawa and apparently, for the boy, she is the most beautiful girl to whom heaven has not only granted one gift, but three gifts. As expected, the boy has a crush on the girl. Surprisingly, Sajachi dreams that someday he will be able to date her. That's why he always approaches her passionately on a regular basis. At that moment, explosive fireworks lit up the sky, showering stardust everywhere and creating a magical scene. After a moment, the boy blinks his eyes and he comes back to reality, where the ball shot past him and hit the wall. Meanwhile, the girl becomes worried for him and asks him if he is okay, whereas the boy picks up the ball and looks still in a daze. Thus, he comforts the girl that he is fine. After looking at him from head to toe, confirming that he isn't hurt, Eka lets out a sigh of relief. After that, she scolds him about his careless behavior and tells him that's what happens when he persistently stalks her. Further, the girl tells him to not come near her anymore. After sending Sajachi a sharp scowl, Eka goes from there. She's giving him the Mong glare in full power. At the same time, Sajachi stands there and watches her go. The boy looks sad as he thinks that she is right and decides that he will not go near her. Even when the girl is no longer in sight, Sajachi still doesn't move at all and stands there in a daze. After a while, Sajachi enters the classroom, where Eika is talking with a purple-haired girl. However, when they see the boy entering the classroom, both girls stop talking. After that, the purple-haired girl calls the boy and brightly says good morning to him. But Sajachi doesn't seem to be in a good mood, as he dully returns the greeting. The girl seems to know the reason behind his strange behavior. Thus, she tells him that she hears he got divine punishment this morning because of his everyday behavior towards Eika. The boy looks confused at first, then he realizes the girl is talking about the morning's incident. Hence, he looks sad about it. Meanwhile, Eka tells her friend to go easy on the boy and let him go. However, the girl doesn't listen to her and continues to scold the boy. He's attracting scoldings like a magnet. Apparently, the purple-haired girl tells Sajachi that if he keeps stalking Eka like that, then she is going to dislike him even more. Seemingly, Eka feels bad for the boy. Therefore, she tells her friend to let him go. Surprisingly, Sajachi agrees with the girl and tells him that he thinks the same too and he will stop approaching Eika. Looks like his senses took a little vacation but decided to return just in time. Afterwards, Sajachi quietly sits in his chair. Meanwhile, both girls become confused seeing him so quiet. Hence, Kay asks him if he has a fever or something. Therefore, Sajachi dully replies that he is fine. Yet the girls still seem worried about him. At that moment, the teacher comes into the classroom and tells the students to take their seats. However, when the teacher sees the boy sitting quietly, she looks surprised. Thus, she tells Sajachi that it's unusual for him to be calmly settled down in his seat, because he is always just chasing after Eka. Funnily, the boy becomes embarrassed meanwhile, all the students start laughing at him. However, Eka doesn't find this situation funny. As she sits quietly, after the class ended, the boy leaves the classroom and sees Eka and her friend standing in the corridor. However, when the girl sees Sajachi, she misunderstands him and scolds him to not stalk her anymore. Thus, the boy tells her that he just wants to go to the restroom. Funnily, Eka realizes her mistake and she becomes embarrassed. 
Meanwhile, all the students around them are watching their interaction, and it appears like the girl can't seem to understand why the boy is acting strange. After that, Sajachi leaves from there and goes to the restroom. Suddenly, his friends pull him inside the restroom and start interrogating him about what's going on with him. They ask Sajachi if something happened between the girl and him, and did they fight with each other? Therefore, the boy tells them that nothing special happened and they usually fight with each other, so nothing out of the ordinary happens. However, the boys point out that usually it's Eka who's always angry, and he wouldn't mind that, since he still clings to her, that's why it's strange when he is not following her. Surprisingly, the boy doesn't seem to be phased about their queries and funnily, he doesn't even give them much attention. Thus, the boys ask Sajachi what's the matter with him. Apparently, the boy tells them that he is not in his usual mood, because he feels like something is wrong. After that, he looks in the mirror and asks his friends, does it look like he likes Eka? Suddenly, his friend holds him from his collar and asks him what he is talking about, because everyone knows that he is madly in love with the girl. Surprisingly, Sajachi confesses, it's true he likes Eka to the point that he wants to support and promote her. Funnily, his friend tells him that now he is bragging about his love life at this time. After that, the lunch break starts, and Sajachi stands up to leave the class. However, Eka calls him. Thus, the boy asks her, did she call him? Surprisingly, Eka becomes nervous and she lies to him that he probably misheard it. She is lying as easily as breathing. As Sajachi turns to leave, Eka hurriedly asks him where he is going. Thus, the boy replies that he is going to the cafeteria for his lunch. At this, all the students become shocked because he had never left the girl alone. Funnily, his friend teases him that usually he is always running after Eka and tells her to eat lunch together. Even he asks the girl to share her lunch with him. Apparently, Sajachi always tries to flirt with Eka and do these kinds of stupid things. Hence, the girl becomes embarrassed and tells Sajachi that if he is going to go, then he should hurry up and go, otherwise he is going to run out of time. Therefore, the boy leaves from there. Meanwhile, his friends become worried for him and wonder if he is okay. Funnily, they think that Sajachi might go crazy because he kept getting rejected. Thus, they pray for him to stay strong. They are roasting and praying for him in a single breath. After a while, Sajachi is outside eating his lunch when suddenly, a girl with two ponytails asks him if he is Sajachi. However, the boy lies to the girl that she has probably mistaken him for someone else. It seems like the girl already knows him, as she states that there is no way to mistake him. The boy sarcastically tells her well done on finding him out and he tells her then, yes, he is Sajachi. Therefore, as a reward for finding him out, he gives her some red pickled ginger. However, the girl refuses his treat and tells him that she doesn't want that. Afterwards, Sajachi asks her who she is. Hence, the girl introduces herself that she is Rena Ayazawa from the class next door. Thus, the boy becomes curious and asks Ayazawa why she gets out of her way to meet him here. Surprisingly, the girl questions him back about what he thinks she wants. Funnily, Sajachi finds her irritating. Hence, Ayazawa scolds him that he is being harsh. After a moment, she starts smiling and then she bids farewell to the boy. After that, she walks away from there. Fast forward to the next day, Sajachi is in the classroom, where his friend is wrestling with him. Meanwhile, he is trying to break free from his hold. After some struggle, Yamazaki finally sets him free. Hence, Sajachi complains to his friend that he has already gotten enough of playing pro wrestling with his big sister. So he also doesn't have to do the same with him. However, Yamazaki informs him that he has got a visitor. And it appears, it's a girl and she says she is waiting for him. At that moment, Ayazawa appears behind Yamazaki and happily greets Sajachi. Hence, the boy recognizes her from yesterday and asks her if she is Aizawa, with the weird easygoing vibe. Funnily, the girl looks offended and tells him, that's harsh. Afterwards, she asks him if he is saying that he doesn't like her nature. Surprisingly, Sajachi confesses, it's not like he didn't like that, but he is in shock that a cute girl would suddenly come up to talk to him. Funnily, Yamazaki doesn't look happy with his reply. Thus, he holds Sajachi from his collar and angrily asks him how he can say this, while he has a woman called Natsukawa. Hence, the boy replies that Natsukawa is a goodness. At this, Yamazaki asks her if that's the case, then what is this girl to him? Funnily, Sajachi is looking clueless, that's why he asks the girl what she is. Thus, Ayazawa smartly tells him that who knows, she also wonders who she is. Yamazaki becomes more angry, and he starts cursing the boy. Afterwards, he pushes Sajachi into the wall. 
Suddenly, Eika with her friend comes there and sees them. Meanwhile, Sajachi also notices Eika and sees that she enters the classroom. Thus, he calls Eika, but the girl rudely asks him what. The boy becomes sad and tells her it's nothing. After that, Eika rudely states that she is today's class helper. After that, she puts her bag in the chair. Meanwhile, Kay teases him and leaves from there to help Eika, whereas the boy looks done with his life. After a while, Ayazoa realizes that maybe she gave the girl the wrong idea. Afterwards, she tells the boy that he can call her Rena. Funnily, both boys become shocked by her straightforwardness. After some time, everyone is on the football field, where Eika and Kay are playing volleyball. Meanwhile, Sajachi is watching them play. After a while, Eika notices him looking in their direction but she ignores him and starts playing again. Funnily, the boy holds his chest like the girl's ignorance has killed him. At that moment, his friend tells him the ball is headed towards him. But the lover boy is in his own world, so he doesn't listen to him and the other team makes the goal. After that, his friend scolds him about what the hell he is doing. Thus, the boy apologizes to his friend. After some time, Sajachi is washing his hands when suddenly, Kay comes to him and taunts that he is being totally lame. Hence, the boy asks her what she wants. Funnily, she sarcastically replies that she is just here saying hi to a cheating womanizer. The boy is looking confused about how he got the womanizer title. Therefore, Kay tells him that he is doing quite a bit of looking elsewhere. However, the boy tries to deny it, but she cuts him off and says she can understand since it's Aizawa after all so she guesses even Sajachi would be tempted by her. Apparently, Aizawa is famous as the girl who's been lovey-dovey forever with her boyfriend, who's a second year. So based on the K-Intel network, they have been going out since around when she was a first year in middle school. Funnily, Sajachi becomes nervous hearing about the girl's Intel network, hence he tells her that she suddenly seems scary. After thinking about it, Sajachi feels that K seems like being a spy or something like that would suit her. Funnily, the girl hits him for his stupidity. The next day, Sajachi is thinking about Aizawa's boyfriend, who is apparently on grade above them in second year. The boy is also looking at a photo of Aizawa with his boyfriend and thinking why were they taking photos in the first place. Sajachi then sees Aizawa's boyfriend chatting with his friends in the classroom. After some time, the boy is sitting in his classroom and seems to be in deep thinking. Thus, Kay asks him what he is pondering about while scowling. Apparently, he states that there are all kinds of people in the world. Funnily, Kay stands over him and tells him that he is right. The boy becomes suspicious and asks her why she sympathizes with him while looking at his face. Hence, she teases him that there is a special kind right in front of him, that's why. The boy looks offended by her reply. Thus, they start arguing, however, Eka tells both of them to stop and surprisingly, they do stop their banter. Afterwards, Kay tells Tajachi that there is something off about him. Therefore, the boy boredly asks her what she means. Surprisingly, Kay realizes the reasons and states that he is concerned about Aizawa, isn't he? Sajachi becomes speechless as the girl makes the right assumption about him. Hence, he tells her that she is right. Kay seems satisfied by her small victory. After that, she goes to her seat. However, the boy states that he has a question for the two of them. Both girls become confused about it. At that moment, Aizawa comes into the class and cheerfully calls Sajachi. At this, all three of them look back at her. Hence, Aizawa realizes that maybe she has disturbed them. That's why she says sorry to them. Afterwards, she gets close to Sajachi. Therefore, the boy asks her what it is. Surprisingly, Aizawa informs the boy that she was thinking of talking to him. However, Kei interrupts them and asks her if she has any particular business with him. After thinking about it, Aizawa replies that she doesn't have any. Afterwards, Kay comfortably sits on the chair and casually says to the girl that, let's talk. Apparently, she says to Aizawa to tell them the reason why she broke up with her ex-boyfriend. Hence, Aizawa becomes shocked and hesitantly asks her, how does she know about that? Or rather, how she actually asks her something like that out of the blue. Kay tells her that it should be okay for her to tell them, since she is right now with Sajachi. Aizawa seems hesitant as she tells them that, Maybe it's because she had a not so good trait in her. Funnily, Kay says to her that it's admirable because her ex-boyfriend is a poor judge of character after all, but she doesn't have to worry since there's Sajachi and it was the right choice for her to break up with an ex-boyfriend like that. At that moment, Eka scolds her about what she's saying. However, she ignores her and continues to taunt her. To a good girl like Aizawa, ex doesn't deserve her. Surprisingly, Aizawa tells her to stop bad-mouthing her ex-boyfriend so much. 
Apparently, she seems upset about it. Thus, she runs away from there. Meanwhile, the boy also goes behind her and accidentally collides with a girl, who is holding a bunch of papers. Hence, he apologizes to her, but strangely, the girl runs away from there without saying anything to him. On the other hand, Aizawa is sitting outside, looking sad. Sajachi also comes there and apologizes to her. However, the girl asks him why he is apologizing. It appears the boy didn't expect Kei to blurt out something that insensitive. Afterwards, they both are sitting together. Seemingly, Ayazoa points out to him that when he is with her, he doesn't talk much about Natsukawa. Surprisingly, the boy reveals that he learned through romantic experience that when he is with a girl, then he shouldn't talk about other girls in front of her. Thus, the girl smiling asks him if he is involved in a romantic relationship. Apparently, he replies that he doesn't know about that, since he doesn't have any experience of having accomplished that. However, Ayazoa questions him that, doesn't he like Natsukawa? The boy seems shocked that she knows this. Thus, the girl informs him that there is no one who doesn't know about this. Surprisingly, Sajachi states that maybe it's time for him to move on. Because he feels like somewhere in his heart, there is a part of him who has cooled off from being rejected too much. The girl looks shocked by his confession. Afterwards, Sajachi questions her whether she has been in a romantic relationship. However, the boy suddenly stops and apologizes to her for asking about a sensitive topic. Surprisingly, Ayazawa reveals that his stupid ex states that she is not his type. That's why she broke up with him. And now she is going to make him suffer through the same experience. Or that's what she has been thinking. But she feels like misunderstandings and swings and all these things are awful. Hence, the boy notices that she is upset about all this. So he tries to distract her and reveals that before he met Eika, he got brutally rejected by another person. Ayazawa becomes shocked at this. Therefore, he tells her that it's a story from when he was in middle school. It appears he received comments like, a plain looking guy, with a face like that, and she said more awful things to him and rejected him like that. On top of that, her boyfriend appeared and he also started hitting him. As Sajachi got hit and went flying off, Eika was walking behind him and his face rammed into her chest. Funnily, Eika started screaming and slapped his face. Apparently, that was the moment he fell for her. Ayazawa becomes shocked and questions him why that is. Hence, Sajachi tells that Eika straightened out the circumstances between them and she says that to mock a person for liking someone was the worst behavior as a human. And she got angry at them. After that, Sajachi couldn't see anything but Eika. After an intense moment, the boy states that it's a lie, but Eika would do something like that. So it may have been love at first sight at the beginning for him. But in the end, the reason why he became serious was because he couldn't forget that kindness from the first time she held out his hand to help him. Apparently, that's why Sajachi became a fan of Eika. Ayazawa looks confused, therefore, she asks him what he means by her fan. It appears, for the boy, Eika Natsukawa is the idol of all humankind. She is hope and a goddess. That's why he has decided right now to support Eika. However, Ayazawa reminds him that he didn't want to go out with Eika, so why is he changing it now? Surprisingly, he states that his feelings won't cool off like that. That's why if he can't go out with her, then there are other ways of doing things without going out with her. So apparently, the boy is planning to support Eika from afar, and he will hope for her happiness. After that, Ayazawa looks impressed by him, and feels that maybe there's that kind of way of doing things too. Surprisingly, the girl kind of feels a little cheered up after hearing his confessions. Afterwards, the boy tells her that he will make a complaint to K for her. However, the girl stops him and tells him it's fine, since Kei was just protecting Eika. Yet it seems like the boy doesn't understand why this would have affected Eika. Thus, Ayazawa tells him that Kei probably realized that she had an ulterior motive. Therefore, she decides to not do any more strange things. After that, she turns around to leave. However, Sajachi stops her and he looks embarrassed, as tells her that it's not just her ex but men are all kind of like that. It seems like the girl already knows this, the next day comes and apparently, Eika is sneaking behind a wall, when suddenly, Kei comes behind her and tells her to look in front of her, where Aizawa is holding her boyfriend's hand and they seem happy together. It appears they got back together. Surprisingly, when Aizawa sees the girls looking in her direction, she playfully winks at them. After that, Kei and Eika walk together. There Kei states that Sejachi not only gets turned down by Eika, Aichi, but from Aizawa as well, in the classroom, Kei and Eika stand in front of the boy and apparently, they can't believe that he is fine by being rejected 
and he looks happy if he was able to make some good memories with the girl. Hence, Sajachi tells them that he knew Aizawa had some special circumstance. That's why he figured he should enjoy being with her before she gave herself away. Because someone like Aizawa, who seems kind of naughty at first glance, but she has friendliness and charm that is a man's ideal. So to have the time to come in contact with a girl like her is a reward. Funnily, Kei thinks he is being creepy. Furthermore, he confesses that it's fine since everything settled down where they should settle. Heika can't believe he is saying these sensible things. Therefore, she asks him if he is fine. Surprisingly, the boy states that he was not expecting anything aside from being disliked or something like that. It seems like Eka understands the meaning behind his words, but she lies that she doesn't get it. Meanwhile, Kei asks Sajachi what happened to him, since he seems more off than usual. Apparently, Sajachi replies that what was off about him was the way he used to be until now. Suddenly, his friends come there and tease him about why he is looking gloomy. Has he finally been disliked by Eka? Funnily, the boy tells them that they are kind of in the middle of a divorce proceeding right now, so be quiet. Thus, his friends start laughing at him. Meanwhile, Eka is looking embarrassed by the situation. After some time, Sajachi comes back home and he is thinking about Eka. Apparently, he is feeling like an idiot for thinking that a girl like Eka would like him. Surprisingly, after a few moments, Eka comes to meet him. Thus, the boy straightforwardly asks her what she wants to talk about, because he knows she wouldn't show up for nothing. Hence, Eka asks him if something happened to him, since he is behaving weirdly. Further, she tells him that he is usually totally unfazed and always comes to her for everything. But lately he hasn't been annoying at all, and he is not chasing her like before. Thus, she feels like he has become reasonable or something. However, Sajachi interrupts her blubbering and confesses that he likes her and he even asks her out. Funnily, Eka becomes flustered and gives him reasons about why she can't go out with him. It seems like the boy knows this and informs her that, no matter how much she rejects him, he never becomes discouraged and continues to chase after her. Suddenly, his sister interrupts them and comes inside the house. Therefore, she asks him if the girl is her girlfriend. However, he replies that she is not and she has some work that's why she comes to visit him. After that, the boy goes to walk Eka home. The girl then asks him what he was about to say before his sister came home. Hence, he tells her that he has been annoying her up until now so he wanted to say he is not going to follow her around anymore. Funnily, he jokes that she should find another girl for him. Hence, Eka becomes angry with him and runs away from there. Meanwhile, the boy can't seem to understand why she gets angry at him. The next morning in the classroom, the boy realizes that he and the girl have separate seating arrangements, so from now on he won't be able to sit besides her. In the classroom, Kay tells the boy that he should take responsibility for his reaction. Apparently, there are a lot of girls who couldn't get close to Eka, because the boy always used to follow her like a lost puppy. So for now, Eka has pretty much only Kei and Sajachi as companions to interact with. At that moment, Sajachi realizes his mistakes about how he always used to annoy the girl and follow her everywhere. Meanwhile, all the students used to watch their interactions and the girls felt sorry for Eka. However, even after all that, the girls feel like Eka and Sajachi will look good together. Whereas, half-boys think that if Eka doesn't like him, then she wouldn't even reply to him. The other half-boys feel that they don't know them well enough to comment at them. So it's best to leave them in peace. Back to the present, Sajachi feels guilty about his actions, and he wonders that, as long as he doesn't get close to her now, the other people around her won't hold back and maybe they interact with her. Thus he suddenly stands up and decides that he should support and promote her. Meanwhile, Kay becomes confused seeing the boy standing like a statue. After some time, Kay happily hugs the girl from behind and confesses that she is feeling lonely since she has been separated from her. Hence, Eka becomes shy and tells her that they are in the same class, so they can always see each other. On the other hand, Sajachi is watching them and realizes that it's true. He hasn't seen Eka being all that friendly to anyone besides Kay. Thus he feels, if that's the case, then maybe this was all the more just the right time. After that, he turns to go away. However, his friend puts his arm on his shoulder and asks him what the hell is happening with him and he has been gloomy lately. Further, he asks the boy if he isn't going to go over to where Eka is. Funnily, Sajachi tells his friend to shut up and asks him, doesn't he have someone he can go to? It seems like it was the wrong thing to say to him, since he strangles Sajachi and tells him that he shouldn't have said that. However, the boy tells him that it isn't going to work on him. Meanwhile, the girl also notices their friendly banter. 
After some time, Sajachi is walking in the school's hallway and thinking that, from Eika's viewpoint, it seems like she didn't want to be alone. So she had no choice. Hence, even if he wishes and has dreams, it's a waste of time, since it doesn't matter to her. At that moment, a girl with long hair appears in front of the boy and asks him does. He is the one who frightened her kohai the other day. Thus, the boy becomes confused, but then he remembers the incident where he crashed with the girl accidentally. That's why the boy is now apologizing to the girl in front of him and tells her that he was the one. However, the girl tells him that it's fine. She then asks him why he is apologizing since he didn't have bad intentions when he spoke to her friend. It appears the boy feels like he has frightened the girl, that's why he is feeling bad. Furthermore, he feels like the only one who can speak to an innocent girl in a deserted place is the good-looking guy in a shoujo manga. And if he had thought about it a little, then he would have known he was going to make her tremble in fear. You know I was going to roast him, but honestly he did such a good job on himself. Anyways, the girl looks shocked by his reply. Hence, she informs him that despite how she looks, she is still her senpai. Further, the girl compliments the boy that besides, under normal circumstances, his actions are ones that should be praised. However, Satoki tells her that for her to say this to him has made him relieved, but once again, he is sorry. After that, he then excuses from her and walks away from there. Yet the girl stops him. Apparently, Sajachi calls her Shinomi as senpai and asks her what it is. The girl asks him if he knows who she is. Hence, he replies that there are probably not too many students who don't know, since she is famous as the charismatic chair of the school committee for morals and discipline. It seems the girl becomes shy after hearing the compliment. Therefore, she realizes that maybe that's how the general student thinks of her. Surprisingly, the girl points out to him that, on the other hand, he seems to have a rather low self-evaluation of himself. Thus, she reveals to him that the reason why that girl had this kind of attitude is because she has a sense of insecurity towards men. However, the boy doesn't seem to agree with her, as he thinks that it would have been the same, even if it hadn't been him though. Hence, he turns to leave after that. But surprisingly, Shinomiya holds his hand and tells him that she has something to discuss with him. Sajachi looks shocked by her reply. After some moments, the girl and Sajachi are sitting in a student guidance room. The girl tells the boy that she is convinced that he had no ulterior motive when he spoke to her kohai. Apparently, he doesn't seem to be the pretentious type. Well, that was almost a compliment. Anyways, Satachi dryly thanks her. Afterwards, she informs him that the girl he spoke to is called Yuyu and Atomi. And as a morals and discipline committee member, she is a hard-working person and has a serious and sincere personality. Seemingly, it's not her, but the other committee members are the same as well. It appears each of them takes pride and engages in their work as morals and discipline committee members. However, from time to time, they lose their confidence and they become pessimistic. Hence, the boy confidently praises Shinomiya that if they are learning by watching their cool senpai, then it's possible they may think like that. Funnily, the girl becomes flustered by his compliment, so she tells him to not praise her that much. Afterwards, Sajachi asks the girl if she is worried about her kohai. Thus, she worriedly tells him that it's this too, but she was thinking, since she hasn't been able to do anything about that, it may mean she is the problem as well. Apparently, she wants to help her teammates, who are worrying over things. That's why she tries to encourage them. But they always reply back and tell her that she can do it because she is the committee chair. Surprisingly, the boy states that, in simple words, they are trying to say, there's no way she could understand their feelings. Thus, he tells her that she must feel like that's what is being said. Isn't it? The girl becomes shocked and tells him that he is right. After that, she tells him that he doesn't hold back when he talks. Surprisingly, Sajachi tells her that he would say he is the type of person who belongs with her teammate's side. However, as an outsider, he may be able to view things objectively. At that, Shinomiya asks him if it's right. Hence, the boy tells her that, generally speaking, they are not hoping for a senpai to encourage them or things like that. The girl looks worried as she asks him, what is she supposed to do then? Surprisingly, he tells her to don't let it get to her. Thus, he advises the girl that with that one phrase, and if she gives him a pat on the back after that, then they will probably be completely satisfied. Because apparently, her teammates probably don't want her to go as far as to adjust her level to theirs, to sympathize with them. Further, Sajachi thinks that they just want her to keep leading and positively pulling them along. He is basically a walking, talking self-help book, minus the cheesy quotes. Meanwhile, Shinomiya is shocked that this is such a simple solution. Hence, Sajachi tells him that that is all it takes, and they get a back pat from a senpai they respect. 
and that's like being in seventh heaven. Funnily, the girl becomes flustered and scolds him that she is not a goddess or what. The boy happily informs her that, for her teammates, she is probably more respected than a goddess. It seems like the girl finally understands what was going on with his teammates. After a while, Shinomiya says sorry to Sajachi for keeping him busy during the break. However, he tells her that it's fine and says goodbye to her. After that, he turns to leave, but the girl tells him to hold on. Hence, she tells him that she hasn't asked his name yet. Thus, he lies to her that it's Yamazaki. Surprisingly, the girl praises him and tells him that she doesn't think his goodwill was unnecessary after all. And she feels, if there is goodwill that is not acknowledged, then it is in itself something she doesn't want to acknowledge. Even after this, Sajachi doesn't seem happy. Fast forward to the next day. Apparently, Sajachi is holding his sister's stuff. Meanwhile, she is scolding him that she won't forgive him if he drops that. Hence, the boy jokes that it's dangerous from women's week isn't. Funnily, he starts panicking after seeing her dangerous glare. Therefore, Sajachi clarifies that he was just kidding and it was a joke, since he wouldn't even dream of that. Surprisingly, his sister asks him, did he talk to the girl from the other day after that? Thus, the boy realizes she is talking about Eika, so he tells her that they are talking normally, and he is just a classmate to her. After that, they leave the house and walk together. Hence, his sister says to him, if he keeps like that, then he is not going to be popular with girls. But the foolish boy doesn't seem to understand her, as he asks her what she means. Funnily, his sister looks done with his stupidity. After that, they notice Eika walking in front of them. Therefore, his sister takes the stuff from him and tells him he should have a proper talk with Eika. Hence, she leaves him there and hurriedly greets Eika. She then goes away from there, leaving them alone. Thus, Sajachi greets Eika and afterwards, they quietly start walking. The girl seems nervous in his presence. However, she tries to talk to him, but she doesn't know what to say to him. That's why she becomes quiet again. Meanwhile, the boy seems to be waiting for her to say something, but this doesn't happen. At last they reach the school, where Sajachi informs her that he is going in the other direction. At that moment, Kei yells at him, and she worriedly tells him that the situation is very bad. Because the Morals and Discipline Committee Chair, Shinomiya is looking totally pissed off. After that, Sajachi secretly watches the girl talking with her teammates in the classroom. He then asks Kei about what happened. Apparently, Kei informs him that there is no way he would do that reckless behavior of making it look like he is being all ladies first. At that moment, Shinomiya comes to them and says to him that she didn't think he would show up until the morning assembly. Thus, Sajachi hesitantly says good morning to her. But surprisingly, Shinomiya cheerfully greets him back and calls him Yamazaki. Meanwhile, Eika and Kei look confused about why she is calling the boy Yamazaki. After that, Shinomiya taunts him that he is a self-professed Yamazaki, other than known as Sajachi. Whereas, Yuyu is also standing beside her senpai. Furthermore, Shinomiya calmly tells the boy that she will be waiting for him at the student guidance room during lunch break. Thus, Sajachi agrees to come. Afterwards, the girl says to Yu to let's go, since she has finished what she needed to do for now. They then walk away from there. On the other hand, Eika tells the boy that she was the girl from the Moral and Discipline Committee. So what in the world he did? Suddenly, Yamazaki holds Sajachi from his neck and angrily says to him, how dare he impersonate and use his name without his permission. Funnily, he tells Sajachi to give him back his spark of joy. Seems like Sajachi realizes that his friend likes the girl. Therefore, he asks his friend if that means she is his type. Surprisingly, Yamazaki starts blushing and states that she is definitely his type. Hence, Sajachi smartly uses that moment to set himself free from his friend's hold and tells him, that's great since he got his name called for her. Yamazaki easily gets distracted and forgets about the boy's stupid blunder. It seems like he has gone to his dreamland. After some time, Kei jumps on Sajachi and questions him about how he gets familiarized with Shinomiya. Hence, he informs her that a lot has happened and he used a false name. Funnily, the girl scolds him that he is an idiot, since it was such a good chance for him to be in Shinomiya's favor. But he ruins it. However, Sajachi asks the girl what the hell she is talking about. After a while, in the student guidance room, Shinomiya questions the boy that he is not willing to apologize then, right? Hence, Sajachi informs her that's incorrect. Since the other day, he made her miss out on eating lunch, and he regrets that. So now he did the proper thing and bought two of these snacks. Thus, he tells her that means he is offering the peace between them. After that, he gives her the snack. Meanwhile, Shinomiya tells him that, as he can see, Yu Yu is here too. 
Therefore, the boy offers her a spare triangle chocolate pie. Surprisingly, Yu Yu moves away from him like he was giving her poison. It's just a pie, not a poisoned apple from Snow White. Anyways, the boy gives the chocolate to Shinomiya. Afterwards, she tells the boy to sit down. Hence, the girl asks him why he lied. Was it just a prank, or did he have some sort of reason for it? Apparently, he replies that frankly he got the feeling that to have his name be remembered by a person in the position of the Morals and Discipline Committee Chair would only always be troublesome. So that's why he reflexively answered with a classmate's name. Hence, the girl feels hurt by his reply. However, she tells him that means he passed off his troubles onto his classmates. Funnily, Sajachi tells the girl that Yamazaki was delighted. Thus, Shinomiya becomes angry at him and states that she doesn't get why there would be a student who dislikes this and the other student becomes delighted about the same thing. At this, the boy smartly directs the question towards the girl and says that it looks like Inatomi senpai understands the reason. Thus, Yuyu becomes nervous and hides behind Shinomiya. Hence, the girl scolds him to not frighten Yuyu. Sajachi hurriedly apologizes to her. Therefore, the girl tells him that she is kidding and why he keeps apologizing immediately. Apparently, the boy feels that he is consequently frightening Yuyu, that's why. Surprisingly, Yuyu seems pleased by his response. Therefore, she nervously tells Shinomiya that she thinks Yamazaki was delighted because he notices how beautiful she is. Funnily, Shinomiya gets flustered and scolds the girl to stop saying weird stuff. Meanwhile, Yuyu shyly tells her it's not something that is weird. Anyways, Shinomiya tells Sajachi that it's not good to falsify his own name. Thus, the boy says sorry to her. If he keeps apologizing this much, the word is going to lose all meaning. After that, she tells him to be careful from now on. Hence, the boy stands to leave. However, Shinomiya stops him and informs him that the main topic isn't about this. Apparently, Yuyu was worried about the fact that she flat out rejected his offer. That's why she wants to apologize to him and formally wants to thank him. Therefore, the boy becomes confused about why she wants to thank him and even though it's not as if he helped her or anything. Surprisingly, Yuyu confesses to Sajachi. On that incident, she trampled on his kindness. That's why she is sorry. Further, she wants to thank him for calling her out when she was carrying heavy things. Therefore, at this moment, she hopes to fix her sense of insecurity towards men and she will try to do her best. Hence, Sajachi wishes her good luck and states that he is going now. Afterwards, when he comes out of the room, Kei secretly calls him inside the classroom. There she shows him that Eika is interacting with other students. Meanwhile, Sajachi becomes happy seeing her like that. Funnily, Kei points out to him that, what's with this father-like look? However, he changes the topic and asks her if she is going to join Eika. Seemingly, she answers that she will go. Therefore, she asks Sajachi, what about him? Doesn't he also join them? Surprisingly, the boy states that it's better he doesn't join them. After that, Kei goes to Eika. Meanwhile, Sajachi feels that maybe he was in her way after all. At that moment, he gets a message and he then leaves the classroom. Meanwhile, Eika is watching him from afar. Apparently, the boy gets a message from his sister to meet her after school in the student council room. Funnily, he feels that she is demanding like an egoistic boyfriend type. After some time, Sajachi comes to meet his sister. Hence, he asks her what she wants. Apparently, she tells him about the school visit tour during summer break. For that, there is a lot of materials to gather, and they are so busy, so they want to take as much help as they can get. In simple words, she wants him to help her. Thus, Sajachi taunts her that he is the any help, and if it's a request from the great vice president of the student council, then there's got to be plenty of others who would do as she tells them to. However, she tells him that he is good at administrative stuff. Afterwards, Sajachi starts working meanwhile, his sister blackmails him about the fact that she kept quiet when he fudged his age and did a part-time job before, so now he better work hard. After that, all the boys around him start teasing him. After some time, he gives the work to his sister. Seemingly, she praises him that his self-improvement was worthwhile. Meanwhile, the other boy also looks impressed by his fast working and good working skills. After that, Sajachi asks her, by any chance she is not going to summon him again tomorrow too, right? However, she smartly offers him that, she will buy him a porno mag then, and a big one. Sajachi becomes shocked by her amazing offer. Therefore, he agrees to come tomorrow. Hence, she tells him to meet her tomorrow at 7 a.m. On the other hand, Yuyu and Shinomiya are walking together. Suddenly, Shinomiya states to the girl that she is thinking about Sajachi, right? 
Apparently, she tells Yu Yu that he is her kohai and he is just a little cheeky, but he didn't have any crudeness to him. Thus, Yu Yu also feels the same but she is feeling like she may have said something that might have angered him. However, Shinomiya doesn't think this, yet Yu Yu states that she feels like he was looking at her with a very disappointed look. Apparently, she feels that was it bad of her to say she was going to conquer her fear and sense of insecurity towards men. Surprisingly, Shinomiya comforts her that she is fine and she is going to be okay. Hence, Yu Yu becomes relaxed and starts smiling. The next day comes and Eika enters the classroom. She then sees the boy's bag, but she ignores it and moves away from there. However, a girl calls Eika and asks her, will it be fine if she comes over to hang out at her house sometimes, since her little sister is too cute, so they want to meet her. At that moment, Kei also joins them and tells Eika that it's been a long time. Thus, she also wants to see her sister too. Hence, Eika invites them to come over to her house. Sajachi also enters the class. Therefore, Eika and Kei see him and Kei excitedly calls him. After that, she informs him that they were just talking about going to Eika's house. The boy seems happy about it. However, he tells him he doesn't have a high enough level. Funnily, his friend teases him that the girl's house is not a dungeon. Yet he still asks her if it's okay with such a large group. Surprisingly, Eika tells him that he should know. She won't let Irie come near him. It seems like the boy already knows this fact. After the class started, a girl with short hair discusses Eika about their earlier plan and tells her that they should do it next weekend. Hence, Eika likes the idea, so she agrees with it. Finally, the class ended and the girls started planning everything. Meanwhile, Sajachi doesn't want to go, as he doesn't want to annoy her. However, when he leaves the class, Eika suddenly comes behind him and asks him if he is really not coming. The boy asks him what she is talking about. At that moment, they sadly get interrupted. When Shinomiya comes there and tells Eika, she wants to talk to the boy for a little bit. However, she tells her that if they were in the middle of a conversation, then she doesn't mind and they should finish it first. Although, Eika tells her that it's fine. But she becomes more upset. After a while, Shinomiya and Sajachi are in the student guidance room. Hence, the boy asks her what she wants. Apparently, Shinomiya informs him that she will start by saying thanks to him because she followed his advice and she was able to successfully support Yu Yu. Yet the boy doesn't seem to give her more attention, as he dully replies that he is glad for her. However, the girl tells him that a new problem has occurred again. It appears, the thing is, Yu Yu was depressed that she wasn't able to get him to show that she understood. Seemingly, Sajachi replies that it's not true and he makes a guess that she thinks like this because of her comments towards male students, right? Surprisingly, the boy states that he thinks it's a good goal. However, the girl doesn't believe him. Therefore, she leans close to him and demands the boy to tell her his real opinion. Finally, he reveals that he was just disappointed at Inatomi Sensei's naively flippant resolve because he doesn't think that she apologized to him just for his sake. Apparently, he thinks Yu Yu got fed up with herself because she displayed her sense of insecurity to the point that she flat out rejected a person's kindness. However, he hurriedly praises her but the problem was after that, when in order to conquer her sense of insecurity, Yu Yu was making an effort to do so, by using the incident with him as a stepping stone. And that was the kind of nuance she was saying. Therefore, Shinomiya asks him if it's a bad thing. Apparently, he tells the girl that, if that was the case, then she shouldn't have brought her along, since it was not something she should say while bringing along the head of the Moral and Discipline Committee. However, she did this because that would give her courage and she wouldn't be scared of anything. And that's all the boy notices about her. Hence, Shinomiya is looking impressed by him, as she praises him that he is unsparing. Therefore, he states that it's not true. Because as a mascot, Yuyu is very precious. Meanwhile, Shinomiya notices that the boy is good at reading people. Surprisingly, he reveals that it's because up until now, all he could see was just one person. And he has just stopped doing that now yet he still hasn't figured her out. After that, he goes away from there. After a week, all the students come to meet Eika in her house, where all the girls are melting over Eika's little sister's cuteness. Apparently, she is serving snacks to all of them and also chatting with them. In the morning, Sajachi is going to school while thinking that he can do without doing something nuts like last summer. Apparently, he does want Eika to be there, but also he doesn't want to annoy her anymore. After a while, he reaches the school and he seems relieved to finally escape the heat of the sun. At that moment, he feels like the bliss of a classroom having air conditioning is like heaven. After a moment of relief, he hears Kay calling him. 
Thus, the girl comes in front of him and she becomes confused by his weird expression. Therefore, she asks him what happens. Apparently, he tells her that she cannot appear right in front of him in scanty clothing. Funnily, he feels that it's bad for his heart. Hence, Kay gets angry at the boy and scolds him that, can he not call the summer uniform, scanty clothing? She even calls him a pervert. However, the boy taunts her that his defense power of about 95 went suddenly to 20 just because of her. Kay looks offended by it. Yet, she teases Sajachi that isn't he will be okay with not gazing upon a certain someone's summer uniform. She knows what she's doing. For a minute there, the boy becomes speechless and that's a very rare sight to see. Seemingly, he is imagining Eika in a summer look. Meanwhile, Eika is talking with other students. After seeing her from afar, he feels like it's a recreation of fairies. Funnily, Kay feels like the boy is being creepy. She is roasting the dude like a champ. Anyways, Sajachi asks the girl if she had gone to meet Eika at her house on the weekend. This mischievous girl starts teasing him that, does he want to know now and is he now curious about it? She is not letting him live in peace. Therefore, the boy gets irritated and he tells her to not leave him hanging like that. However, the teacher comes into the classroom and they stop their bantering. Their back and forth is funnier than a stand-up comedy show. After a while, Kay is watching the pictures that they clicked at Eika's house Surprisingly, the girl notices that in every picture, Eika is looking sad, and it seems like she hasn't enjoyed her time with them. After the class ended, Kei called Sajachi and asked him why he hadn't even said a single word to Eika today. Apparently, the boy states that she should know there is a distance factor between them. Even he feels that it has become normal between them. Also, everyone is talking with Eika nowadays. That's why he doesn't want to ruin it with his presence. It seems like Kei becomes shocked since she didn't expect him to be okay with being away from her. Thus, she asks him if he is really fine with it. Surprisingly, the boy is indeed okay with it, because he doesn't want to destroy the girl's happy environment. By resuming their interaction like before, that's why he feels like right now, doing things like this is good for Eika. However, Kay doesn't look happy with his weird decisions. Furthermore, Sajachi confesses that if he gets close to Eika, then he can't see the whole perspective of his imagination regarding the look of Eika's summer uniform. Funnily, Kay scolds him for his perverted imagination. Meanwhile, Eika notices them bickering with each other. Apparently, Sajachi tells the girl that Eika is really cute. That's why Kay is scolding him that he is being a total pervert. After that, she even starts pinching the boy to irritate him more. He needs her comedic jabs like a plant needs water, otherwise he'd just be a boring cactus. After some time, the boys are playing soccer outside on the ground. However, after finishing the game, Sajachi goes to freshen up. There, his friend tells him that he did a nice job today. Hence, Sajachi states that their soccer club is playing outstandingly. Afterwards, the boy asks his friend, did he and Yamazaki are still goofing off these days? His friend tells Sajachi to not match him together with Yamazaki. At this, Sajachi starts laughing at poor Yamazaki. After a moment, his friend comments that Eika is cute. Sajachi becomes jealous and asks him what he means. He's all I don't care about her, but here his jealousy is throwing a party. Anyway, Sasaki shows him the picture and Sajachi notices that Eika's little sister is like an angel. After seeing his friend's pictures with Eika's little sister, he notices that his friend has behaved nicely with the girl, like he is her big brother. However, his friend asks Sajachi why he didn't come. Thus, the boy tells him that he wasn't invited, so it's not like he had a choice. Afterwards, Sajachi sends pictures to Yuki and teases the boy that he is going to complain to Yuki. Funnily, the boy starts panicking and tells Sajachi to not send his sister the text. He even calls Sajachi an idiot. They then start fighting over the mobile. After a while, his friend takes his mobile and texts Sasuke that she has misguided her own little sister's expressive attachment style to her brother and apparently she personally requested him that he make a detailed report of her activities. After that, the boy sent the pictures and this text to the girl. Thus, he sees the photos of Eika's little sister with him and thinks that is cute to love her like a big brother. At that moment, he gets a text from the girl. It appears the girl has thanked him for the pictures and tells him to send more reports of him. They both look tense that she cares too much for her big brother. Hence, he received a text from his big sister. After that, they chatted for a while. Fast forward to the next day, Sajachi is opening his snack to eat. Since it's lunchtime, however, Yamazaki interrupts his happy meal time and hugs the boy. Funnily, Sajachi teases him finally. A feral Yamazaki has come jumping out. 
Dude is trying to be funny, but his jokes are stuck in traffic. Seemingly, Yamazaki notices that the boy is not in his cheerful mood, so he asks him what happened. However, Sajachi ignores his question and tells him that he is hyper as usual. Funnily, Yamazaki states that he is not happy and apparently, he is like super unexcited because he thinks that moving to new seats is cruel. However, it's nice for him that he has gotten to know Koga. Hence, Sajachi becomes confused since Kago is a very bold girl and he didn't think she was Kamazaki's type. That's why he directly asks the boy, are they too seriously acquainted with each other? Apparently, Kamazaki informs him that they are connected through Murata. It appears she is from the female's basketball team. After that, Kamazaki teases the boy that if he is going so far as to be all alone eating by himself, then he might want to eat together. I'm not roasting Sajachi, his friends roast him better than I ever could. Funny, without waiting for Sajachi's reply, Yamazaki yells at the group of girls to tell them that Sajachi is also joining them. Meanwhile, MC becomes stunned. Thus, the girls ask him if he also wants to join them, since he already gets trapped because of his friend's stupidness. That's why he agrees to join them. After a while, they all are chatting with each other. Meanwhile, Sajachi is sulking beside them. Hence, the girl tells the boy that he has been quiet lately. So does that mean he becomes an introvert? Funnily, he irritatedly replies that introvert, yeah. He is an introvert and they should look at where his seat is. Then they will realize why he has become introverted. Therefore, all of them look at his seat and apparently, his seat is in the very front corner. Hence, they all start laughing at his sad luck. Meanwhile, the boy doesn't get why they are finding this situation so funny. Afterwards, Koga asks him what's going on with him and Eika, since they haven't seen their marital fights lately. At least I'm not the only one who likes to gossip. However, Sojachi suddenly grabs Yamazaki from his collar and tells him angrily that how dare he take her from him. Hence the boy informs him he hasn't taken her. Meanwhile, the girls ask Sojachi if they have done the deed already. The boy becomes shocked and he doesn't seem happy about their comment. However, the girls ask him that Eika and he have been in that kind of relationship since middle school. Then they probably must have done it right. Apparently, Sajachi tells them to not be stupid because he doesn't even know where the girl's house is. Funnily, the girls roast the poor guy that he failed as a husband too. They even think that maybe Eika doesn't find him that attractive. Meanwhile, Yamazaki makes fun of him, saying that Sajachi is in many ways ordinary, like his face. It seems, Sajachi doesn't like his remarks. Hence he says to Yamazaki they hadn't talked in a while, and in that time, he has gotten carried away with himself. Thus, Sajachi turns back the question on him and states that, what about him? However, Yamazaki confidently replies that of course, he has been popular with girls, plus he has asked out a lot too. Hence, Sajachi becomes curious and asks him who has asked him out. Funnily, the boy teases Sajachi that don't freak out after hearing it. Apparently, he reveals that Okumura from Class A has asked him out. However, Koga bursts the boy's bubble and informs him that she thinks the girl is definitely not serious about it. Funnily, Yamazaki goes into shock and stands there like a statue. Meanwhile, Sajachi becomes worried about him and he calls him several times. But the boy doesn't respond back. At that moment, the other girl asks Sajachi what happened with the girl before he was with. Hence, the boy becomes confused and asks her what about the girl. Surprisingly, she asks him if he has done the deed with a brown, brown-haired girl. Finally, Sajachi realizes that she is talking about Aizawa. However, he informs them that they are misunderstanding that, because despite how she looks, Aizawa has been devoted to that senpai since the time she enrolled here. At that moment, Eika interrupts him and angrily calls him. Meanwhile, Sajachi says to her that he was about to give an important backup for Aizawa, but she cuts him off. Hence, the girl angrily tells him to come with her. Surprisingly, she grabs his hand and hurriedly takes him from there. Meanwhile, the boy complains to her that, don't just grab him suddenly. On the other hand, Keijo finds this situation funny, as she laughs at them for being hilarious. After a while, Eika takes the boy into the music room and finally, Sajachi notices that she is looking very angry. Thus, he nervously asks her if she is angry about something. Funnily, the boy tells her to wait a second. After that, he tries to think about the reason why Eika is so angry. Apparently, Sajachi realizes that he has done many things to make her angry. Hence, he gathers his courage and opens his eyes to see her. Surprisingly, she is standing really close to him and she is looking legit pissed at him. However, he tries to calm her down. 
Meanwhile, he is also trying to calm himself down too. Funnily, he tells her to back off a little bit from him. After that, he requests her to at least give him a hint about the number one thing that is irritating her. Since he doesn't know what he should start apologizing for, surprisingly, she informs him that she is angry because he was talking to those girls. However, the boy doesn't get what she means, so he asks her if she means Kago and her corpse from a different dimension. Thus, Eika becomes flustered and agrees with it. So Jachi becomes happy seeing her possessive behavior. That's why he hopefully asks her what it means. Meanwhile, the girl becomes embarrassed. Therefore, she angrily tells him that he shouldn't take it in the wrong way and she doesn't mean it like that. Surprisingly, Sajachi also becomes angry and tells her that he knows it. That's why he doesn't understand her reaction. Hence, the girl becomes more embarrassed and tells him to leave it. She then runs away from there. Meanwhile, the boy is looking frustrated about what's happening with the girl. Even now, he feels like the girl is very cute. After some time, Sajachi is sitting in his chair while looking worried. Apparently, he is trying to understand what happened earlier. On the other hand, Kay pinches him to get his attention. Thus, she asks Sajachi what's wrong with him and why he is making a weird face. However, he informs her that's his usual weird face. Funnily, she tells him that's true. Therefore, he sulks more and states that she should at least deny it. After a while, the boy asks her, does she think Eika would get angry if he were talking to Yamazaki or Kago and the others? Thus, Kei asks him why he thinks that Eika would get angry over this. Finally, Sajachi's patience bursts and he tells the girl that's what he wants to know. Apparently, the boy is looking very frustrated about it. However, after a while, he tries to calm himself down and comforts himself that he doesn't have to take it seriously. Because he doesn't think Eika has said this with that kind of intention. Yet this stupid boy is still thinking. What were her intentions then, when she said such a pathetically adorable thing? Surprisingly, he feels, the girl is so cute that he wants to hug her. Funnily, Kay informs him that, if he knows that, his true intentions are leaking out. Therefore, he replies that he knows there is no way he would be allowed to do something like that to Eika. Suddenly, a handsome boy stands in front of Sajachi and asks him, can he step out for just a little bit? Meanwhile, Eika is watching them, after the boys leave the classroom. Eika then nervously goes to meet Kei. On the other hand, the boy takes Sajachi to the student council room and tells him that he knows this is out of the blue. However, Sajachi says it's fine. Further, he asks the boy if he wants to talk to him about helping out again. Thus, the boy informs him, this time it's not about that. Surprisingly, the boy questions Sajachi about what he thinks about himself. Hence, Sajachi doesn't get it, therefore, he asks him if he wants to know his personality. It appears the boy wants to hear Sajachi's self-evaluation. Seemingly, Sajachi informs him he thinks he is just an ordinary guy and he thinks about himself as just a commoner. Surprisingly, the boy tells him that he has heard that he had a crush on one girl for many years. Sajachi becomes shocked that the boy knows this. Afterwards, the boy questions him, why did he stop pursuing her? However, Sajachi tells him that there is no reason for him to speak about it. Surprisingly, the boy doesn't force him much and leaves the question. He then asks him if there is a chance that something has changed about him recently. Apparently, Sajachi confesses that it's true and he feels rather than change, he thinks it's more that he has stopped doing things that are uncalled for. Hence, the boy tells him he won't ask the reason for that. But does her sister know this? Sajachi tells him why she would know this. It appears the boy realizes that Sajachi hasn't told this to her sister. Seemingly, Sajachi tells the boy, his big sister is the person who has the least interest in him in the whole world. So there's no need for him to talk to her. Surprisingly, the boy informs him that it's not true. The truth is, Keita is worried by his change. Yet, Sajachi still doesn't believe him and playfully tells him that she is the person who would say something cold-blooded while ordering him to go buy something like Hajin Das. However, the boy cuts him off and reveals to him that her big sister thinks that she is the reason he has changed. Apparently, she feels like she might have destroyed her little brother's precious springtime of life. Hence, Sajachi becomes shocked to know this. Furthermore, the boy asks Sajachi, was he not told by Keide ever since he was little, that he is just that level of a person, or something like that? Surprisingly, the boy thinks that Keide has something like feelings of guilt towards him. However, the boy and their friends also cheered her up by saying that's not true, but she doesn't believe them. It's the first time for them to see Keide cry about something. Hence, Sajachi can't believe that he is talking about her big sister. Thus, the boy tells him that there is no reason for him to lie here. Finally, Sajachi feels 
The boy is telling the truth. Therefore, he reassures him that he will do something about it. Surprisingly, the boy informs him a place had already been arranged. However, Sajachi becomes uneasy, since he feels something like this can be discussed at home. At that end, Sajachi agrees to go with him. After they are walking together in the corridor, when Sajachi requests the boy to let him just ask one thing. Thus, the boy asks him what it is, apparently. Sajachi asks him, did he bring this topic up because he doesn't want to see her big sister sad? Or is it because he is irritated at him for being the cause of his big sister's distress? Funnily, the boy tells him that it's both. Afterwards, the boy asks Sajachi, is he worried about whether he will be able to talk about it properly? Sajachi honestly tells him that he is not. Given that, his big sister is habitually strong-willed, so he doesn't think she will do something like admit it honestly. But that's not like, he intends to, like usual, bow down and cater to her either. After that, Sajachi praises the boy that he is very good-looking. Thus, the boy informs him that, because of that, he got carried away and went through a bitter experience. Surprisingly, he confesses that the one who picked him up and rescued him was his big sister. Afterwards, he tells Sajachi that he is counting on him now. Meanwhile, Kei and Eika are stalking them secretly. On the other hand, Sajachi realizes that his big sister is avoiding him on purpose. Apparently, the boy is going upstairs. He feels that he doesn't want to see his loved one's sad face, even if it belongs to his courageous and self-indulgent big sister. After that, he reaches the rooftop and he finds her sister standing there alone. However, when Kei Day sees him, she asks him why he is here. Funnily, Sajachi tells her that she knows he wouldn't come to a place like this if he wasn't summoned. Hence, he asks her why she is here. Therefore, she informs him that Rin said she will come later. However, he states to her that he doesn't think Shinomiya will be coming. Yet, Keide doesn't believe him and asks him why he is saying this. Apparently, he reveals to her that it's Hanawa Senpai's little white lie. After that, the boy tells her that he hears she is depressed about something. Funnily, he informs her that a very loose-tongued student council president let it slip to him. However, Keita becomes nervous and she starts denying it. But Sajachi cuts her off and tells her to say 10 good traits about him. After that, he smartly traps her by saying that if she is at the point of being depressed, then she won't be able to tell them. Thus, he starts the countdown for her. Meanwhile, Keita gets nervous and tries to think about his good traits. However, after seeing her struggling, the boy tells her that it's fine but now she has to say 10 ordinary traits about him. Therefore, she starts telling him things like his face, height, personality, body type, intelligence, financial power, hairstyle, fashion sense, physical strength, and many other things, like how good he is at being a little brother. However, Sajachi is now telling her to stop, since she already said more than 10 traits. Afterwards, he tells her that he knew these are her true feelings, since she thinks he is an ordinary guy, Hence, he reminds his sister that she has always taught him the truth about reality. So why is she worrying about him, when that's so unlike her? Surprisingly, he confesses that it's true that recently he has given up hope on various things. But that's something he got passionate about by choice and then he cooled off on by his choice. That's why there is no reason for her to blame herself for it. After that, his sister tells him that something like this has happened before, where they said they gave up on the person they liked but the truth was they couldn't give up. And by doing so, there was a person who had a breakdown. That's why she gets worried that he might also end up the same way too. However, the boy tells him that he is a wimpy guy who totally can't forget about Eka. Surprisingly, Kei Day informs him that she might have said negative things to him, but she wasn't serious, so he should have confidence in herself. Thus, she tells him that giving up on a girl he has loved for years is a shame. Apparently, the boy confesses that they are siblings and they always fight with each other and disrespect each other. But they never say those things seriously. They also help each other without saying thank you and cover each other's stupid things. So she doesn't have to change herself, because then she won't be like his big sister anymore. Hence, he tries to cheer her up by saying that at least, that shitting big sister is the one he likes the best. That's why for her to do something like being mindful at this point is just annoying so she should stop being too worried for him. After that, they start their playful banter again. However, Eka suddenly comes there angrily. Meanwhile, Kei is trying to stop her, but she is not listening to her. Apparently, the girl scolds Sajachi that how dare he talk to his big sister like that. Hence, the boy becomes shocked seeing both girls there. Yet, Eka holds him from his shirt and scolds him to hurry up and apologize to his sister. 
Apparently, she tells him that his older sister would be sad when he said those rude things to her. On the other hand, Kate is trying to stop her from killing the boy. Afterwards, the boy asks them if they were listening to their conversation, because he feels like he might have said some embarrassing thing. However, Kate tells him that he doesn't have to worry, since they only heard only the last part. Thus, Sajachi still doesn't seem to believe that. After that, he asks Eika why she is here out of all places. Apparently, she angrily informs him he was taken away by a student council member. At this, the boy asks if she went out of her way to come after him to the rooftop. At that moment, the girl realizes that's true, but she doesn't understand why she does something like act as if she is following after him. Therefore, she becomes embarrassed and hurriedly runs away from there. Meanwhile, Sajachi is feeling sad that he has been left behind again. Surprisingly, Kei Day realizes that this thing happened to him before also, so she feels like she had her head in the clouds this whole time. However, both siblings start arguing again like before. After that, Kei Day walks away from there. Fast forward to the nighttime. The boy is going to his home, while thinking that Eika was being weird today. After a while, he comes into his home, where his mom scolds him to at least greet her. Thus, he dully greets his mom and goes to his big sister. Apparently, he apologizes to her for saying rude things to her. Surprisingly, the boy brought snacks for them, but his sister tells him she will eat later. Hence, Sajachi teases her that he will then eat it himself. Yet, Kei Day stops him and tries to take the snacks from him. After that, they start fighting over it. In the end, Kei Day wins the fights and she then enjoys eating the snacks in front of him. Funnily, the boy starts taking her embarrassing picture to irritate her. Meanwhile, their mom is watching them from the kitchen and she seems happy to see them together. After that, Sajachi happily thinks that now he will show these pictures to the student council's good-looking boys. Funnily, it seems like he underestimates her sister, since she attacks him with a stick. Afterwards, they start wrestling with each other. Eika and Kei are sitting in a cafe and Eika seems embarrassed by her earlier actions. Meanwhile, Kei tells her that she really rushed headlong into things way too much today. Apparently, the girl is thinking the same thing. That's why she is feeling sorry for her actions. However, Kei comforts her that it's fine. She doesn't have to worry about it. But Kei is feeling curious, therefore she asks the girl why she has done something like that. Surprisingly, Eika also doesn't understand either. Thus, she tells Kei that she knows how everyone came to her house the other day. At this, Kei enthusiastically answers that she does remember it, since Ai-chan was behaving so cutely. Hence, Eika looks hesitant as she tells the girl that, at that time too, when her little sister warmed up towards Sasaki-kun and also with everyone else, she doesn't feel good, Kei becomes confused. Therefore, she asks her if her little sister is not allowed to warm up to them. Seemingly, the girl tries to explain that it's not that her sister is not allowed, but Eika doesn't complete her sentence since she doesn't know what to tell her. However, seeing Eika like this, Kei understands what her friend is trying to tell. That's why the girl teases Eika that she doesn't like it, right? Eri-chan warmed up to the other classmates before a certain someone. Apparently, she is hinting that the girl wanted her little sister to be warmed up to Sajachi first, before anyone else. And it seems like she is right as Eika hesitantly agrees with her. Therefore, the girl teases her that if she was reminded of Sajachi when she saw Sasakin. Friendship is as much about playful jabs and lightly teasing as it is about shared support and compassion. Anyways, Eika becomes shy, that's why she didn't face the girl and tells her that she can stop teasing her now, but it doesn't seem like the girl is listening to her, since she continues to tease her. After that, Kei tells Eika that recently Sajachi hasn't been approaching her at all, and it looks like the boy is making her kind of making her feel confused and frustrated. Hence, Eika agrees with her. However, she also herself doesn't understand why she is feeling that way either. Surprisingly, Kei states to Eika that, maybe for her, Sajachi is most likely one of the people to whom she feels she can belong. However, the girl becomes embarrassed. Thus, she tries to deny it and says that it's not him who she belongs with, because he stalks her and always annoys her. Apparently, Kay tells her that rather than whether she feels comfortable or uncomfortable around him, doesn't it make her happy that there is someone who likes her? It appears the girl becomes hesitant. That's why Kay comforts her. She thinks if she suddenly lost a place where she belongs, then anyone would feel uneasy too. Seemingly, Eka becomes impressed with her. Therefore, she praises Kay. She is amazing. Funnily, the girl teases Eka. The awkward side of her is also very cute, and she likes that too. However, Eka becomes frustrated therefore, she tells her to stop teasing her now. Seemingly, Kei says sorry to her. 
but she warns Eika, there is no guarantee that even Sajachi won't move away from her. Thus, she should know this. Furthermore, the girl states to Eika that, she thinks at the very best, the boy has said what he wanted to say to her up until now. Hence, Eika also agrees with her, because she knows the boy has approached her daily, to the point of being annoying. That's why, Kay advises Eika that, maybe now it's her turn to make an effort for him. Thus, the girl starts thinking about what her friend has suggested to her. Meanwhile, Kay is enjoying sipping her chocolate shake, since she knows her work is done now. When Eika seems to be considering what she has said. Fast forward to the next day, Sajachi and his big sister are eating breakfast and apparently, Kei Day informs her brother that he is being grubby. However, the boy doesn't care about it. Thus, Sajachi tells her that he knows about it. So whatever he is grubby anyway. Apparently, she tells her that it's not that, actually, his hair is grown. After that, she clicks a picture of his hair and then shows it to him. The boy becomes surprised that his hair has already grown this long. Therefore, Kei Day advises him that they will stand out more than he thinks. So he should hurry up and get it dyed. Funnily, the boy is thinking of doing two-tone color, since he thinks that it will look stylish. His future self might hate him for this decision. However, Kei Day tells him what he is saying, because in his case, it just makes him look unkempt. Thus, she advises the boy that for his lighter colored hair, he should take proper care of it. Yet the boy still tells her that he will get it dyed eventually. Hence, Kei Day notices that he used to be more concerned about it. Apparently, he used to be like that because before he was trying his best to do lots of things to become a man who was suitable for Eika. But now the boy feels like he doesn't need to be that concerned anymore, since it's not like he is going to be standing alongside anyone, so that's why he doesn't care about it. After a while, the boy reaches the school and as he enters the classroom, he notices Eika and Kei sitting together. Therefore, he says good morning to Eika. However, the girl taunts him about why he is being respectful all of a sudden. Apparently, Sajachi smartly asks her if she thinks he could behave in a normal way after what happened yesterday. Finally, the girl becomes embarrassed remembering her actions. Afterwards, the boy again normally says morning to the girl and also to Kay. However, Kay doesn't like how he ignores her. That's why she kicks him in between the legs. That's a very dangerous territory she has attacked. Also, she curses him for being rude. Meanwhile, Sajachi becomes pale because of the pain. After a while, he asks the girl if the two were able to get home safely yesterday. Hence, Kei excitedly informs him that they both drank new frap items yesterday. Sajachi teases them about it and tells them, that means they both had fun. Funnily, Eika taunts the boy that it was nice and quiet because he wasn't there. Ouch, that must have hurt a lot. However, Kei softens the blow by saying that it was a girl's only gathering, so of course. After that, she tries to change the subject and tells the boy that he should fan them since it's so hot. Surprisingly, the boy agrees to do that, and he takes out a textbook to fan them. He starts fanning them with it. Afterwards, they start to banter with each other. Apparently, the boy playfully taunts her that, honestly, she is such a slave driver. Meanwhile, Kay as usual being dramatically says that there's a limit to how much of the blazing sun one can take. Funnily, Sajachi playfully gasps at this and asks her if she has enough sunscreen to last. Maybe they can give me some lessons on roasting. Anyways, Eka becomes embarrassed, so she tells the boy that he should stop it, since he is being creepy. After a while, Sajachi gets a message from her sister that she doesn't need his help today either, so he doesn't have to come to the student council. Seemingly, the boy becomes relieved, because he feels kind of awkward with Yuki Senpai in the mix too. Meanwhile, Eka comes behind the boy to talk to him, but he leaves the classroom before he even notices her. Thus, the girl becomes sad, but she doesn't call him either to get his attention. So in a way, the boy isn't at fault here. After some time, MC is outside the cafeteria. There he notices that the seats next to the window that are usually taken are available. Hence he goes there to eat his lunch. Apparently, today at a convenience store, the boy ended up buying two of the you can be satisfied with by having just one nutritional snack bars. Their slogan should be eat one, then immediately crave everything else in sight. Funnily, the boy is just trying to cheat by eating two snack bars with a pastry. Seemingly, he feels like today, he simply won't be able to stop himself, so he will probably end up with overnutrition. However, at that moment, a girl interrupts his foodie thoughts by calling him. Hence, he comes back to reality and sees that beside his table, Shinomiya is sitting with her friends. Therefore, he awkwardly greets her but then he starts focusing on his snack bar. Yet, the girl again interrupts him and she tells him to, 
don't just resume his kneel like normal. Sajachi becomes confused so he asks her, what does she mean? Apparently, the girl explains to him that this is where people normally request something like, would it be okay to share a table? However, Sajachi tells her that, but isn't this kind of dangerous? Because he thinks that, if one has to think normally, sitting with something like a group of morals and discipline committee members would be nothing but terror. Hence, the boy notices a particular girl in the group and asks who that angel is. Finally, Shinomiya warns him to revise that. It appears, the girl is an archangel. Funnily, the boy is looking afraid of Shinomiya, as he sees her eyes are glaring fire at him. Surprisingly, Yu Yu sweetly offers Sajachi to come to eat with them. Meanwhile, Shinomiya threatens him that Yu Yu is saying so too, so he should come now. Finally, the boy agrees to join them. After a while, they all are enjoying their lunch. However, Yu Yu asks the boy what he is eating. Therefore, Sajachi informs her that he is having a pastry and a little bit of other stuff that he bought at the convenience store. Hence, the girl becomes worried and informs him that's not good. He needs to properly eat healthy things. Funnily, Sajachi becomes shocked by her strange caring behavior. That's why he asks Shinomiya if Yu gets a boyfriend or something. However, Shinomiya gets angry at him and holds him by his ear. Hence, she tells him that Yu doesn't have a boyfriend. Meanwhile, the boy is requesting her to leave him, since he feels like his ear will come off, whereas the other girl is also looking angry at him. Finally, Shinomiya leaves him and sits back. After that, Yu Yu asks the boy that this is the first time he has met with Aya Chan, right? Thus, she informs him that the girl is her childhood friend. Surprisingly, Shinomiya states, the girl is an excellent kohai who has nurtured Yu Yu up to this point. However, Yu Yu tells her friend that she is being curt. Yet the girl tries to deny it. Hence, Yu Yu tells her to smile then. Funnily, she forces herself to fake a smile and tries to be nice with the boy. But Sajachi tells her that she doesn't have to force herself. At this, Aya Chan angrily informs him that she is being nice to him for Yu Yu's sake, not for him. However, Yu Yu tries to stop her, but she tells her inside that, the thing about men is, they are all a bunch of perverts, who will creepily look at cute girls like her. So that explains where Yu Yu gets the disliked opinion towards man. Surprisingly, Yu Yu tries to defend the boy and tells her that Sajachi isn't that kind of a person. Funnily, Shinomiya also tells her that the boy is a chicken. Thus, Sajachi requests Shinomiya that, could she please not totally stab him suddenly like that? After some time, they finish their lunch. Yu Yu and her friend go to give the tray back. Meanwhile, Sajachi asks Shinomiya why she is sulking. Apparently, she asks him what he thinks after seeing Yu Yu's change. Funnily, the boy tells her of course, he is surprised. But did she make her play Otome games or something? Surprisingly, the girl teases him that there is no way she would make her do something like that, since Yu Yu is her wife. Thus, Sajachi asks the girl, then what about Mita Senpai? Funnily, Shinomita teases him that she is her mother. After that, the boy asks her that she didn't tell Yu Yu about his opinion right. Hence, the girl asks him, was it necessary to tell her? Though Sajachi tells Shinomiya, it wasn't necessary but he thought she would never let him get close to Yu Yu again. Apparently, the girl informs him that there is no way she would do something like that, because she would never disregard the supporter who helped change Yu Yu. Surprisingly, she informs him that what Yu needed at that time was to know the creatures known as boys, whom she is insecure about, have good traits to them. So the first point was to gain a starting point from that. Thus, the boy becomes confused about what she means by starting point. That's why, Shinomiya explains his nods of response and words at that time were things that gave Yu confidence. Ever since then, she swiftly gained confidence. However, Sajachi doesn't want to take credit. So he tells the girl that he didn't do anything significant. Yet Shinomiya states that it matters for Yu Yu, at least in regards to someone like her, who is to the point of being excessively shy. That's why, the girl is praising the boy that regardless of intentions, the one who gave her that momentum was him. However, Sajachi informs her it was a flake. Besides, he doesn't think he will call out to her in the same way again. Surprisingly, Shinomita tells him she doesn't mind it, since something bad will not happen because of that. After that, the girl advises Sajachi to have some confidence in himself, as he has not only solved Yui's problem but also her too. Thus, Sajachi gets surprised and asks what he had done. Apparently, the girl followed his advice and helped Yuyu. It appears, the girl feels good by helping her friends. Afterwards, Shinomiya tells the boy she never expected him to be Kei Dae's younger brother. 
Hence, he asks her if she is her sister's friend. Surprisingly, the girl reveals that she is her sister's friend from the very beginning of the first year. It appears she knows her from around the time when Kei Day dyed her hair blonde the day after she started school. When set out on her Japanese fashion debut, surprisingly, Shinomiya confesses that she had a hard time dealing with her back then. However, as her younger brother, Sajachi apologizes to her for his sister's behavior. After the break, Sajachi comes back to the class and he notices Sasaki is holding his head. Thus, he worriedly asks him if he is not feeling well or something. However, Sasaki shows the boy his mobile. Where Sajachi sees that, Yuki has texted him about what he is doing Big Brother, who he is talking to and many more like that. Hence, Sajachi asks him what happened after that. Thus, he informs him that, when Sasaki reaches home, it's been like this the whole time. It appears Yuki has become extra possessive over his brother. Funnily, Sajachi gives him his condolences. However, Sasaki becomes angry at him for putting him in this problem. Yet, Sajachi tries to comfort him, isn't it cute since she is a little sister? Whereas, Sasaki tells Sajachi that he also has an older sister, so is she kind to him? Funnily, he says that it's a relationship that can't be summed up into one word. However, he tells the boy that when he already has a little cute sister, then fawning over Eika's little sister is wrong. Yet the boy tries to explain but he gets interrupted as Eika and Kei come there. After that, Sasaki takes the boy outside to talk to him. Surprisingly, Sasaki reveals that he has a crush on Eika. Thus, Sajachi states that he is not going to make objections over that, because he knows many boys must have already had a crush on Eika. But the one who will decide is Eika. However, Sasaki asks him how he can be fine when he also still likes her. Therefore, Sajachi tells him he doesn't have any right to the girl, so he won't stop him from approaching her. But from now on, he will be treating him coldly. Thus, Sasaki asks Sajachi how he can treat her coldly. It appears Sajachi explains to him he wouldn't like it right if her favorite pop idol suddenly seemed to have a guy around her. Then how can he like it when he approaches Eika? However, Sasuke informs the boy that he is seriously setting sights on Eika. Thus, Sajachi asks him why he is getting all fired up. After a while, Sajachi comes back to the classroom, but he seems worried about Sasaki. Apparently, the boy knows the girl is beautiful and that someday a boy will approach her. Hence, Sajachi thinks he will like it when she gets together with a good boy. Thus, he feels that Sasaki isn't a bad boy for her. Seemingly, Sasaki is talking with the other girls and Eika. Meanwhile, Sajachi is watching them from afar and he feels that Sasaki is already in Eika's little sister's favor. Plus, he is a good-looking guy, so he will be a good partner for Eika. That's why, Sajachi is feeling like it's probably better that he is no longer near Eika after all. A few minutes later, the teacher informs Sajachi that some textbooks got mixed in with the class next door, so he should go and hand them back. Sajachi then takes the textbooks from him and sees that Eika's textbook is also in it. However, he sees that Eika is talking with Sasaki, therefore, he doesn't go to her. However, he gives Kei the textbooks and tells her to hand these to Eika. Since he has to go to the restroom, after some time, Sajachi sees that Sasaki is going home with Kei and Eika. Surprisingly, when he goes into the locker room, suddenly Eika comes behind him and holds him by his shirt. Thus, the boy gets surprised and he asks her what she's doing here. Yet even now, he notices how cute she is. However, the girl angrily tells him that she is not cute. Anyways, MC asks her if she wasn't heading home with Kei and others just now. Hence, Eika asks him how he knows this. Thus, he lies to her that he just happened to see her going with them. Afterwards, he asks her if she forgets anything. She informs him that she forgets something, and that's why she comes back. MC surprisingly asks her whether she wants to go with him. Hence, the girl happily agrees to go with him. Afterward, Eika is trying to find her thing. Meanwhile, she tells him that she also has some business with him too. The boy becomes surprised at this. However, Eka hurriedly informs him that's not something important. But it's just that she made a promise with Kay that she will ask him this by the end of the day. Surprisingly, she asks him where he always goes when it's lunchtime. Sajachi becomes nervous so he hurriedly informs her. He tries eating meals on the bench in the inner courtyard or eat it at the cafeteria and so on. Funnily, Eka becomes shy as she asks him with whom he eats lunch. However, the boy tells her he eats it alone. Seemingly, the girl tells him why he is eating alone, when he should eat it with everyone. Funnily, Sajachi doesn't understand her code wording, and instead, he informs her that today, 
He ate with Shinomiya Senpai, Yuyu, and her friend. At this, Eika becomes curious and asks him what's his relationship with Shinomiya Senpai. However, he tells her it's nothing like that. They have just normal Senpai Kohai relations, and she happens to be my big sister's friend too. After a moment of silence, Eika asks him if he isn't going to eat with everyone like before. Apparently, Sajachi thinks that if he will be around the girl, then there are chances that Eika's springtime of life will end up fading away. That's why the boy tells her that he will not do that. But after seeing her sad face, the boy hurriedly tells her that he doesn't want the end of term results to come out. After that, they both start walking home. However, Eika asks him why he isn't doing something about his hair. Seemingly, Sajachi tells her that even her sister told him that they are looking grubby. Surprisingly, the girl advises him that things like first impressions can end up changing a lot, so he should hurry and do something. Hence, the boy says that he will stop by the drugstore on his way home. Therefore, he asks her opinion about which color will look better on him, black hair or brown hair. Hence, the girl gets close to him to look at him better. Meanwhile, MC becomes shy seeing her getting close to him. After a moment, Eika tells him that she is okay with either color. Surprisingly, the girl reveals that if he had been brown-haired at that time, then he might not have called out to him then. Thus, he asks him which time she is talking about. Hence, the girl becomes shy and doesn't answer him. However, Sajachi informs her he will go with something to her liking. Plus, he is also okay with either one too, so he will play it safe. After some time, the boy is at the convenience store to buy hair dye, but he can't find the black hair color there. That's why he is thinking of buying a dark brown hair color, since he feels it has kind of a cool ring to it. After reaching home, Sajachi is trying to apply the hair dye. When Kei Day comes into the bathroom and the boy informs her he is dyeing his hair. However, he informs her that there wasn't any black dye, so he decided on dark brown dye. Apparently, she tells him it should be fine, since this color turns out really black at the beginning. After that, Kei Day notices that the boy is not applying it properly. Instead, he is making it worse. That's why she starts dyeing his hair herself. Meanwhile, Shijachi complains that she is being too rough. After washing the hair color, the boy is blow drying his hair and he feels that they are looking too black. Thus, Kei Day reminds him that she has already told him they will look like this for a while. Furthermore, she informs him if he washes it vigorously, then his hair will have a natural look in about two days. Funnily, he teases her that, just as he expects from a former blonde Gaoru. However, Kei Day doesn't find his teasing funny, as she angrily glares at him. Fast forward to the next day. Apparently, Sajachi gets 65th rank in the final exams. Thus, he feels that motivation is something that anyone can be influenced by at any time. It is the driving force of action. Funnily, he feels that being in love was incredible. At least at that time, he got 32 rank because he used to study hard to be at the same level as the Eka. But now he doesn't have that motivation, so that's why he is lacking in his studies. However, Kay asks him what his rank is since her rank is 74. Hence, the boy shows her his rank card and tells her to see it herself. After seeing his rank, Kay tells him that he was a lot higher last time. Further, she tells him that she asked with the sense that he probably will be in the top 50 again. So this was unexpected for her. However, NC asks her why she is so cheerful. Thus, K informs him that his last rank was 220th. That's why she is happy to get 74 rank this time. Meanwhile, Kamazaki also comes there and asks him what's his rank, since he is in 230 rank. Hence, Sajachi tells him it's nice if he is happy. Surprisingly, Eika comes in second place, and it appears Sajachi is happy for her, as he feels she is highly capable. It appears the boy feels like he was in the way of study also, because before MC was in 32nd place and Eika was in 27th place. After that, Sajachi sees Eika talking with her friends and he feels that watching the girl from afar isn't so bad either. However, Sasaki comes to meet up and he tells him that he gets 29th rank. Hence, the boy asks Sajachi if he isn't focusing on his studies lately. Meanwhile, Sajachi angrily tells him to not taunt him because it gets on his nerves that he still looks good even with his sarcastic attitude. At this moment, Sajachi realizes that it's a serious situation, since for a student like him who's not a good-looking type, then his weapon is humanities as a whole. In other words, he can't just accept that a good-looking guy from the soccer club is taking that away. It seems like the boy has gotten a new motivation to study. After a while, Eika points out to him that he has dyed his hair. 
Thus, the boy almost gets a heart attack from being surprised that the girl finally notices something about him. All the students are chatting with each other in the classroom. Meanwhile, Eka is talking with her classmates and apparently, the girls are asking her if she wants to go somewhere during summer break. Thus, Eka agrees with them, since it sounds good to enjoy the summer with them. However, she notices Sajachi sitting in his chair. Meanwhile, the other girl says to Eka that she wants to see her little sister again. But Eka doesn't understand what the girl said, since her focus was on the boy. Thus, she asks the girl to repeat her question. Hence, the girl tells her she wants to play with Iri chan again because she was too cute. However, the other girl states that, for some reason, Iri chan pounced on her though. Therefore, like a good older sister, Eka apologizes to the girl for her sister's behavior. After that, they start to arrange the things to have for lunch. Meanwhile, Sasaki also joins them and then he asks Eka if she isn't going to invite Sajachi. Furthermore, he says to her that lately, the two of them haven't been together often. Thus, the other girl states that maybe it's gotten harder for Sajachi to start a conversation with her, since Eka has gotten so popular. However, Sasaki wonders that maybe something happened with him. Meanwhile, another girl says to them, the boy used to be like way too much. But that stopped suddenly, and he has started behaving very quietly. Apparently, Eka is thinking the same thing and she is wondering what would have happened to him. On the other hand, Sajachi leaves the class to go outside to have his lunch. It appears the boy realizes the other people are noticing his actions. After a while, a yellow-haired girl and two other girls are watching the rank board, and it seems like they are not happy that Eka has gotten a second rank. Thus, one girl points out that Eka does stand out, just as rumored and they feel like Eka could be of their use. On the other hand, Sajachi is watching the girls talking about Eka like that. Hence, he asks them what they want with Eka. Funnily, the yellow-haired girl starts screaming from surprise, since she doesn't expect him to be there. The girl then hides behind her friend and asks the boy who he is. Furthermore, she becomes angry and asks him, just who the hell does he think he is? Afterwards, she arrogantly comes towards him and insults the boy that unlike him, she comes from a noble family. However, Sajachi cuts her off and taunts her that, for a gentle person, she gave out an amusing shriek. Funnily, the boy even gives her a demo of her earlier performance by acting like her. Clearly, I need to learn from their dramatic skills. However, her friends also deny that Marika would never do something like that. But the boy is not letting them off easily, as he again makes fun of the girl's screaming performance. Dude is letting out his inner comedian. After seeing him laughing at them, the girl becomes more pissed and tells him that he is being very rude and this is how the West people are like. Afterwards, she angrily walks away while saying that the boy is not even worth engaging in. Meanwhile, her friends also join her and walk away with her. Funnily, Sajachi is waving at the girls from behind. However, Eka suddenly comes there and asks the boy what's all the noise about. Thus, Kay also joins her and asks him about what happened. Apparently, the boy tells them that those trio of strange pampered ladies were doing weird things. Hence, Eka becomes confused by the title, so she asks him what it means. Seemingly, it means there are some strange people in the world. However, it looks like the boy isn't feeling good as he is coughing. Fast forward to the next day and apparently, it is raining. Hence, Sajachi is going to school when suddenly, he bumps into Eka. Therefore, the girl becomes angry at him for walking carelessly. Meanwhile, the boy greets her and states, isn't it kind of cold today? However, he feels that maybe it's just his imagination. After that, Sajachi quietly walks away from there. Meanwhile, Eka follows behind him, since she becomes worried for him after seeing his strange reaction. After a while, Sajachi turns back to see Eka, but he gets shocked, as he notices that the truck is about to hit the girl, that the last moment he saves her from being hit by it. However, in that process, he ends up getting splashed by the water. After some time, Sajachi is sitting in the classroom. While he is wearing his sports outfit, his uniform gets wet. Funnily, Sajachi feels that even dripping with water, he is looking drop-dead gorgeous. Maybe he can teach me his secret for finding humor in misfortune. Anyways, Kay tells him that even his eyes and face look like he is dead inside. Thus, Sajachi states to her that, could she not deliver the final blow now? Since he is not feeling well today, surprisingly, Eka stands in front of him and offers him a handkerchief. Therefore, she informs him that she hasn't used it yet, so he can use this to dry himself. However, Sajatichi tells her it's okay, plus he feels bad so he can't take it. But Eka doesn't listen to him, she gives him the handkerchief and walks away from there. 
Meanwhile, Kamazaki also offers him his hanky to use too. Funnily, Sajachi tells him to take that thing away, since it's reeking from sweat and it's used. However, Sajachi suddenly faints and after seeing him like this, Kei asks Kazumaki if he is sleeping. Funnily, she is even taping him on his shoulder to check, whereas, Kamazaki is wondering how he can fall asleep that easily. Instead of teasing him, how about they brainstorm some ways to make him feel better? Anyways, Eika comes to them and asks what happened here as she heard a really loud noise. Meanwhile, Sejoshi is trying to stay conscious but he fails. After some time the boy wakes up and hears that the teacher is giving them a lecture about the French Revolution. Hence he realizes that he legit fell asleep earlier. However, he notices that it's already the third period. Thus he is thinking to play innocent and pretend that he has been awake since earlier. Yet when Sajachi tries to sit back, his headache comes back and his head starts to hurt. Therefore he realizes that this is actually a bad headache. Funnily, Kei taps him on his back and asks him if he wakes up. At that moment, the teacher also comes to the boy and states to him that he finally wakes up. Surprisingly, she informs the boy that she was told about the circumstances regarding his sweat outfit look. Thus, she tells him that now she can understand why he feels like sulking. However, she lectures him, that reason doesn't give him an excuse to abandon his lessons. Meanwhile, Eika is watching him all this time and she looks worried for him. Afterwards, Sajachi informs the teacher that he wants to go to the infirmary. Hence, the teacher tells him it's fine, he can go. But he has to ask someone to show him their notes later. Sajachi agrees to do that. After that, he weakly stands up to go, but because of weakness, he ends up falling on the floor. Meanwhile, Eika and Kei become worried for him. The teacher also asks him if he is okay. Back to the flashback, apparently when Sajachi started second year in middle school, that was the first time he put up a front. He was not to completely disclose his true feelings. It appears he thought that, an attitude and a sarcastic way of looking at things, was what becoming an adult was supposed to be like. However, one day he slipped in the cafeteria and ended up becoming the joke for students. Surprisingly, Eka was the only one who came to him and asked him if he was okay. And that's how he met Eka the first time. Back to the present, Eka and Kei have come with Sajachi to the infirmary. Hence, the girls tell the sensei how the boy collapsed. However, the woman says to them, that's a show-stopping performance. Thus, the girls become confused. Therefore, Kei asks her what she means by performance. Surprisingly, Sensei informs them that it doesn't seem like the boy has hit his head, and although he has a fever, he should be okay. However, he is still sleeping for now. Afterwards, the woman asks the girls if they want to go look at him. Hence, they both agree to it. After that, they see him sleeping like a baby and Kei comments that it's the first time they are seeing his sleeping face. Apparently, after seeing Eika being worried for Sajachi, Kei can't help but tease her about it. Hence, Eika becomes shy. Meanwhile, their sensei tells them that their classes are going to start about now. So they have to return to their classroom. However, the sensei reassures them that the boy will be okay. After some time, Sajachi finally awakes and the woman comes to check on him. Afterwards, she informs him that he collapsed in the classroom and everyone carried and transported him here. However, Sajachu asks her if he has a cold. Apparently, the woman tells him, when she took his temperature earlier, it was 38.6 degrees Celsius, so it still might go up higher after that. It seems like the boys can't believe that because he feels like he was totally fine up until this morning. Hence, she states that maybe it's one of those situations where his tension gave out, since he was probably already tired all along. Thus, that includes psychological kinds as well. After that, the woman gives Sajachi medicine and says to him, he should sleep for a little while longer. On the other hand, Eka doesn't seem to be concentrating in the class because she is worried about the boy. However, she doesn't understand why she is thinking too much about him. Meanwhile, Shinomiya comes into their class and all the girls look happy after seeing her there. Shinomiya then goes to Kei and asks her if she was Kei, right? It seems my memory is sharper than her. Funnily, Kei is looking shy in front of the girl. If Kei can feel shy, then the rest is history. However, she regains her senses and tells the girl that it's been a while. Surprisingly, Shinomiya tells her that she had business with Sajachi. Thus, the girl hesitantly informs her about the boy's situation. Meanwhile, Eika is watching them curiously. Whereas, Shinomiya becomes shocked after knowing that the boy collapsed. However, she realizes this information most likely hasn't been conveyed to Keide. Hence, Kei informs her that they were thinking of paying a visit to the boy. Also, Kei is thinking that they should inquire about his condition also. 
In simple words, she means to solve the problems between Eika and Sajachi. However, Shinomiya tells her that, after she let his sister know about his situation, she is thinking that they will go to meet him too. After that, the girl says thank you to Kei and walks away from there. Meanwhile, Kei is over the clouds with happiness after talking with the girl. However, Eika brings her down to reality by pulling her cheeks. Afterwards, she tells the girl she has been admiring Shinomiya for some time. Right. Thus, Kei replies her yes and asks her why she is pinching her. After some time, Eika and Kei are going to meet Sajachi. However, Kei is playfully swinging the boy's bag and seeing that Sajachi's book are super light. Thus, Eika is scolding her to not be too rough on his back. That's why Kei gives her his bag and after holding it, Eika realizes that it's actually super light. So Kei, as usual a curious one, can't seem to stop herself from wondering what's inside it. That's why she tells Eika that, should they open it and look inside. However, the girl tells her, they can't do that to someone's stuff without their permission. Therefore, Kei tells the girl that they wouldn't like it if things like naughty books came out, right? She knows what she's doing. After saying this, Kei walks away. Meanwhile, Eika is thinking about what she has said. Thus, she also becomes curious about it now. Funnily, Kei comes to her and starts making suspense sounds to make the girl more curious. Hence, the girl seems to be fighting with herself over this, since she doesn't want to invade his privacy. Yet she also can't stop herself from being curious. However, at last she decides that they will not look into his bag. After that, they go to meet him while arguing with each other. After they reach the infirmary, they notice that their sensei is not there. Thus, Kei calls the boy if he is awake. However, Eika tells her to shush, since the boy must be sleeping. Therefore, they quietly open the curtain and see that Sajachi is sitting on the bed calmly. Hence, Eika tells the boy if he was awake then he should have answered them. Afterwards, they come into the room and stand beside him. Eika then asks him if he doesn't sleep. Surprisingly, the boy very quietly answers that no and he looks back in the other direction. Meanwhile, the girl asks him if he wants anything. Thus, Kei tells him they have bring Pokeri drink for him. However, the boy doesn't even look at them and continues to look towards the window. Both girls become confused by his reaction. Surprisingly, after a moment, Sajachi apologizes to them for causing trouble. Hence, Eika asks him what's wrong, and he is kind of being weird. Seemingly, Sajachi asks her like what? Therefore, both girls become more confused by his lack of response. That's why Kei signals the girl to check on him. Hence, Eika looks at his face, but she doesn't understand what's happening to him. After a few moments, Sajachi suddenly holds his head. Since then, his head starts hurting. Meanwhile, the girls become concerned for him, and they ask him what happened. Apparently, MC apologizes for startling them, and then informs them that it's his headache. Thus, Eika tells him he doesn't have to talk, and after that, she tries to touch him. But Sajachi surprisingly yells at her too, don't touch him. Hence, the girl becomes afraid and she stays away from him. However, she questions him why she doesn't touch him. Apparently, MC lies to her that he doesn't want to pass his cold to her little sister. That's why he told her to stay away, since he doesn't want Iri-chan to have a fever. Meanwhile, both girls are looking curious after seeing the boy's weird reaction. After a while, the girls leave Sajachi to rest and walk away from the infirmary. Finally, Kei appears like she loves seeing the boy weakened and vulnerable since she feels like the boy was looking too cute like that. However, Eika tells her to stop thinking like that, since it's inappropriate. Apparently, Eika is also feeling the same like Kei, but she doesn't think they paid him a visit with any inappropriate thinking. At that moment, they bump into Shinomiya and Keide. Funnily, the girls feel like they have done something indecent. Hence, Kei hurriedly tells them that they were waiting for the two of them. However, Keide asks them how's Sajachi. After that, they all go to meet him. Apparently, Kei Dei asks him how he is doing. Surprisingly, Sajachi reveals that his head is hurting but he is okay. Thus, Kei Dei becomes more worried for him and she calls him an idiot. After that, she checks his temperature. However, Shinomiya also touches his forehead to check his temper. Hence, Sajachi feels her hand's coldness and it seems to give him relief. Afterwards, the girl asks him if there is anything he wants. She can go and buy it for him. Also, Kei Dei informs him she is going to go call their mom, since she knows he probably hasn't done anything like contact her anyway. Thus, Shinomiya and Kei Dei go outside for a while. On the other hand, Eika notices that Sajachi has already fallen asleep. It seems the girl doesn't like how he was being friendly to Shinomiya when he is not even talking to her properly. 
Fast forward to the next day. Apparently, today Sajachi is absent and Eika seems to be missing him. On the other hand, Sajachi is resting at home. In the evening, someone rings the doorbell to the boy's house. Hence, he goes to check it, and he becomes surprised seeing Eika and Kei standing outside. Thus, he opens the door for them while wearing a face mask, and he states, it's nice of them to come meet him. However, Kay looks angry at him for not even informing them about his health. It appears the girls have texted him a few times to ask how he is, but he doesn't reply to them. Thus, they become worried for him. That's why Kay is angry at him for not even replying to them and ghosting them like that. After that, they come inside the house and Sajachi checks his phone. Hence, he finds many unread messages. Therefore, he replies in the friends group chat that it's his bad, he was sleeping. Funnily, he gets his friend's replies immediately, and it seems like they are also super pissed at him. Meanwhile, Kay taunts him that he has brought this on himself. However, Kay whispers to the boy that Eika is the one who suggested they should come and meet him. There's never a dull moment with this girl. Anyways, Sajachi becomes surprised and asks Eika if it's true. Funnily, the girl becomes embarrassed. Meanwhile, Kay is looking like she has completed her mission. However, the girl tells her that the reason he got drenched was because he helped her. Apparently, Eika can't complete her sentence anymore, since she becomes flustered. Meanwhile, Kay again traps her by saying that she is glad Eika knew where the boy's house was. Thus, Eika embarrassedly says that Yamazaka told her previously, that's all. Girl must be thinking of different ways to murder her. Hence, Sajachi tells her thanks. Afterwards, the girl states that they are leaving now. However, the boy asks her why they are leaving already. Apparently, Eika tells him since they found out he is okay then that's good enough for them. Surprisingly, Kay gives the boy a gift to get well soon. Meanwhile, Eka informs him that he doesn't have to see them out. However, he just makes sure to lock up afterwards. Hence, the girls then go away from there. Fast forward to the next day. Kia is going into the classroom, and when she sees that, Tajachi is arguing with a yellow-haired girl in the hallway. Apparently, the girl is testing the boy's patience with her sassy comments. However, the girl then notices Eka. So she goes to her and says that she had something to tell her. It seems Eika is feeling intimidated by the girl. Apparently, the girl says to her that, in addition to having excellent grades as being ranked second in her class year, and even though it is said that, she is just a little adorable. However, the girl stops at her mid-sentence to check Eika's adorableness. Hence, she leans close to her and sees that Eika is actually really adorable. Thus, Eika becomes confused by her weird behavior, yet she still politely says thanks to her. Meanwhile, the yellow-haired girl continues and says, since Eka is just a little excellent. And at the top of the class year, she, Claudine Marika Shinanom, grants Eka the privilege of supporting her. However, if Sajachi comes behind the girl and says to her, why doesn't she support her? Funnily, Eka gives her a thumbs up and tells her to keep it up. Unknowingly, she has roasted her like a pro. Anyways, the girl dramatically says to her, that's is not what she meant. Apparently, she wants Eka to support her in becoming the next student council president. However, Eka becomes confused that can a first year even become the student council president. At that moment, the girl's friends also come there and tell Eka that they will explain it. It appears for all of the roles of the student council, regardless of class year, self-nomination, or by recommendation, they can apply as a candidate. Funnily, Sajachi makes a joke of her by calling the girl the walking student handbook. It seems the girl didn't understand that the boy was insulting her, since she starts smiling like she has won the match or something. However, her other friend informs her that it wasn't a compliment. Thus, the girl becomes embarrassed, but she continues that in general, first year students are at a disadvantage, because there's the trend that upper level students are the ones who become the representatives of the students. The boy also thinks if that's how it is then, wouldn't the next student council president should be Kai Senpai? However, the girl informs them, the boy has been himself denying that and the present situation among the second years is that there is no one who has announced they will be running as a candidate for president. Meanwhile, Marika thinks that before that she must gather willing supporters by the time a new candidate comes. Hence, Sajachi explains it clearly that, in other words, she wants Eka as a poster girl for her. Surprisingly, Marika agrees that's how she wants Eka. Thus, the boy tells her, that's a bad move. The girl then becomes angry at him and asks why he said that. Seemingly, Sajachi states that Eka stands out too much, and if she uses her as a poster girl, then everyone is going to think this for sure that Eka is participating. However, the girl becomes angry and tells him he is being rude. 
apparently, so Jachi notices that these girls are glaring at him angrily, so he explains to the girl that Aika is cuter than her. That's why, everyone will support Aika, not her. Marika is looking really pissed at him, however her friend informs her that other students are also watching them now, so it's better to back off for now. Therefore, they all leave from there, while telling them that they will come back. After that, Kei tells Sajachi to look at Aika. Hence, he looks at her and notices that her face has become all red. Therefore, he asks Kei what's up with Aika. Funnily, Kei teases him that it's because he has said something out of this world. However, this foolish boy still didn't understand, so he asks her what she means. Apparently, Kei informs him that he said Aika was cute, but the boy thinks that it's something Aika is sick and tired of hearing. She probably wants her ears burned off, since he repeatedly said this many times before, so why is it different now? Thus, Kei explains to him that this time he has said it confidently, that's why. Funnily, Sajachi still doesn't understand what she means. Meanwhile, Eika suddenly bursts at the boy and tells him that he doesn't have to say something so embarrassing around other people. However, Sajachi thinks she is looking too cute even if she is angry. Thus, the girl becomes more embarrassed and she quickly runs away from there. Apparently, the summer break has come, and Sajachi feels that it's important to improve one's standard of living. So that's why he is searching for a part-time job. Hence, he kept on looking online and in the classifieds also. And finally, he finds a job at the bookstore. However, the book owner asks him if he is fine with this job, since it doesn't pay very much salary. Surprisingly, Sajachi informs the man that it's not like he wants an overabundance of pocket money. Apparently, he just wants the experience of this job. After a while, the older man explains the job to him that he will do the purchase assessments, price tag stickers, and inventory control. So the boy's job is to keep books organized and deal with the customers. 